whatever they will be they will come in the form of legislation they will come in the form of administration they will come in the form of propaganda they will come in the form of uh, physical intimidation uh, a whole scope of things so we must be vigilant but we also must be each other's keepers but we also must be ready to repel those attacks um, there is need, I think, from our experience, there is need for research and documentation of these experiences, um, but also documentation of the good work that the sector is doing and profiling of this good work that the sector is doing. Um, our weakness remains is that uh, we are not able to demonstrate the value of the sector in terms of numbers, in terms of money contribution, uh, in a language that makes sense to um, private sector, in a language that makes sense to government, in a language that makes sense to regular citizens. We must also continuously create awareness about our rights as a sector but our rights as citizens um, to operate in this civic space because um, our constitution guarantees public participation not just as a value but as a principle throughout our constitution it is the one principle that provides for sovereignty as outlined in article 1 of the constitution of Kenya and so for that to happen you need civic space which means that we must continuously ensure that Kenyans are aware of this right so that the right cannot be taken away it cannot be squished it cannot be limited what are we doing as a commission to really uh, mitigate these factors? One of the things that we are doing is to work very closely with the Judiciary Training Institute so that there is an understanding by judicial officers that you cannot criminalize uh, the legitimate actions, especially of the people who are engaged in expanding our civil space uh, in this country. And this happened to be the various non-governmental organizations, the various uh, community-based organizations, the various faith-based organizations. So we have developed a manual closely with the Judiciary Training Institute that will actually help our judicial officers understand that uh, our human rights defenders plus the organizations that they work for must be protected under law and that their work should not be criminalized. So for, for us as a commission, we think that is a very legitimate intervention. And as I said earlier, we are also in court now to compel the government to give a commencement date for the Public Benefits Organization Act, which was assented to almost four years now, uh, almost four years ago now, and we believe that if this uh, act was given um, a commencement date, then it would provide a very robust framework to regulate this sector, because if you speak with the actors, the key actors in this sector, the issue is not whether they want to be regulated or not. In fact, like I said earlier, they were in the forefront of developing this regulatory framework. The only thing that is pending now is for the government to come in, give the act a commencement date, and we hope that um, once we get a, a, a declaration from court on the matter of contempt, the government will be compelled to give a commencement date on the PBO Act. Thank you. So we are, we are living in tough times, but it means, therefore, those who are human rights defenders for that civic space, for that freedom of association, for that freedom of assembly, must more than ever reorganize, restrategize, and look for more spaces so that when one space is closed, they open up a new one to um, highlight and speak to the civic issues that affect the country and the continent. What we did um, in, in one of the last forums we had in Nairobi was to come up with principles that then will guide uh, the, um, the framing uh, uh, of the law. Uh, uh, and those principles are basically uh, principles that should enable the civil society in East Africa to operate in a freer environment and for the governments really to respect uh, the, some of the key principles uh, of the East African community provided in the East African Community Treaty, uh, including the rule of law, uh, human rights, observing human rights principles, uh, and so on. So we are doing this basically uh, following the principles of the East African community as articulated uh, in the East African Community Treaty. And therefore, every time we see that certain actions are leading to shrinking of the civic space, then our conclusion is that those actions go against uh, the principles and the requirements uh, of the East African Community uh, Treaty.
Um, we are in the electoral cycle again. I think this is an opportunity for both political parties and uh, the state to act in the interest of um, creating an, a functional space for um, or an environment that can encourage um, uh, freedom of expression, uh, freedom of assembly. I think it would be helpful that uh, both uh, all uh, uh, political parties that are gunning for power in the, in the next election to make declarations on what their positions are run and, and what actions they would take in the next um, uh, government to ensure that we protect civic space. It would be helpful to find, to get uh, political parties uh, aspirants, especially at presidential level, uh, even governors on their own at, at the county level, uh, to make powerful declarations on their positions on the PBO Act uh, of 2013 and whether they would commence it, they would work the kind of environment they would want to create at the county level and at the national level in working with civil society organizations, non-state actors to really push the transformative agenda of this government. In order for us to be able to reclaim or to claim uh, the civic space, but I think it's actually more reclaim the civic space that has been lost by um, the citizens of Kenya, it is important for it to be a multi-stakeholder um, approach for us to be able to ensure that there is space for people to to demand for their rights and for people to demand for accountability, demand for transparency from the government without facing reprisals. The state has to adhere to the obligations that it has made both at uh, international and also at national level to be able to fulfill, respect and promote human rights. Uh, through that and through the complementarity of civil society and um, the other sectors, the media and the private sector, then um, we would be able as a country, we would be able as a country to reclaim the civic space that has been lost. Now on the part of government, I think um, the first message is you need to operationalize the PBO Act like yesterday. So operationalize the PBO Act now. And I'll repeat, operationalize the PBO Act now the way it is. Let's see it working. Let's do the rules and the regulations in good faith, in the spirit of the Act, in the spirit of the Constitution. And let's get it working. And um, after we've seen how it works, then start saying maybe we need to amend this, amend the other. But we can only say that after we have tested it and seen it working. So operationalize the PBO Act now. Number two, um, government uh, last year moved the functions of the sector from the Ministry of Devolution and Planning, which is our natural home because we are development actors. We are supporting the development work of the government to internal security. We are not a security risk. Civil society is not a security risk. Media is not a security risk. So um, I would advise the government to move the functionings of civil society back to the Ministry of Devolution and Planning. And let's engage on how we can have a structured, how we can have um, a real partnership. Because out there, government is claiming that we are partners in various processes, but the reality is that we are not. Partners are people who come to you on equal footing, on level footing, on the same playing ground. Not people you can squash when you feel like squashing. We are not bugs. And we are demanding that government uh, demonstrates its commitment uh, to protecting these fundamental freedoms uh, by enacting and implementing the Public Benefit Organizations Act, because it is the only law that uh, will guarantee these freedoms. We condemn government's uh, insistence on uh, reusing the restrictive uh, NGO Coordination Act of 1990 that has been overtaken by events that is unconstitutional and gives arbitrary powers to the regulator of the civil society uh, to uh, form and operate uh, uh, NGOs in this republic. Uh, that law has been used, in fact abused, by the regulator and its current uh, CEO, Fazul Mohammed, uh, to deregister organizations without any due regard to constitutional protections of freedom of association as provided for in Article 36 of the Constitution. And we want government uh, to repeal that law by implementing the Public Benefit Organizations Act which is the law of the future. I think at the level of citizens, citizens must, like I said, the constitution gives significant amount or numbers of promises. And unless we have a new spirit of active citizenship, um, that would remain just at the level of aspirations. Citizens must organize and mobilize in 
various spaces in wherever they organize uh, they, they exist in in churches and places of worship in in youth sports associations in 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 getates and merry go rounds in marketplaces uh, um in in organizations at the local level to actually push the frontiers so that we can realize and seize on the opportunities that the constitution uh, provides so there's a, a, a space for robust civic engagement uh, uh for citizens in protection of the civic space so it's not just a duty for the state it's also a duty for citizens as rights holders. So lest we forget, let it be known that most of the, uh, uh, the democratic space that we enjoy now would not have been possible had it not been partly because of the contribution of the men and women who occupy our civic spaces. Has Kenya come to an end? No, it's not the end of history for Kenya. Going forward, we expect more challenges that are going to confront us as a country. But again, we expect that the civil society organizations, uh, the NGOs, the FBOs, the CBOs, will be given space to be part of the project we call Kenya, so that as we move from one step of achievement to the next, they'll play their rightful role. Vision 2030 cannot be achieved without the inclusive efforts of everybody. And um, this means that we need to bring all the voices on board, and we cannot curtail other voices because they are critical to what we do. In summary, we are facing a global problem where governments uh, want to limit the space for civic engagement while actually increasing the space for the private sector to ensure that there's minimum accountability. So I think the challenge to, the, to government is to to just stop this kind of uh, little aggressive uh, approaches when it comes to dealing with the independent voices. Because like, like civil society, our work is properly uh, enshrined in the Constitution of Kenya, where the Constitution says everybody has a duty uh, to defend and protect the Constitution, which is which where the government is, is also derived. So governments have no basis of therefore threatening the existence and operations of different independent actors. Then the last issue is that Fazul must go. The NGO board as it currently exists is dysfunctional. It is not serving the sector. Um, instead of supporting the sector, instead of building the capacity of the sector, it is more intent on punishing the sector and killing the sector and instead producing uh, government-owned uh, NGOs. Now, the, the reason that we have civil society is to have a balance, so checks and balances, so that we checks and balance each other. Having government civil society does not help government improve. Instead, it helps government to continue to be worse, to deteriorate. So we need a civil society that is independent, that is honest, but is also able to come to government and collaborate where we can collaborate, but also speak out when government is failing, that here you're failing, and these are the recommendations. So not just criticize, but provide recommendations. So in my view, Fazul must go, the NGO board must go. Um, in fact, I would not even talk about reconstituting it. Um, let's talk about operationalizing the PBO Act, setting up the structures under the PBO Act, including the tribunal, which would then provide an avenue for us to, to mediate and to arbitrate on some of the differences we have.